Hi, I'm Old Sneelock. Welcome to another episode of Old Sneelock's Workshop. This is the third and final edition of the clamp videos. Now, there's more clamps. I'm just not going to show you every clamp I own because a lot of it's just repetitive. And so, we'll call this one the end. But it's going to be a little bit longer because I'm trying to make sure I get everything in there. This is a beam clamp and it's a real antique. I, I bought this at an antique store over in Galesburg, Michigan. And there was two of them there and I probably should have bought both but I didn't have the money in my pocket. And that was a number of years ago. When I went back to get the second one, it was gone. Always buy it when you see it. It might not be there. But it's cool. It uh, uses two castings and a piece of wood. This slides back and forth. And it has a little notch in it so that it goes into those notches. And when you, when you tip it up like that, it latches and locks in works really good. I don't use it much. It's it was more of a thing of, you know, that's really cool. But if I need a big clamp, I got one. Now this one is very similar, but it's a little different design. This one has a uh, guide rail that the clamp jaw rides on and it's uh, pretty fancy. It also has a bolt in the end so you can't drop the end off of it which is a handy thing to have. But it works similar design. It has a notch and the clamp jaw drops into the notch. Someone decided that they were going to make it so that the clamp was a little sturdier and they went through here and drilled in dowels and put them in place. Now I don't know if that really helps because it looks like they broke off a couple of them on the side there. Now the clamp still holds but it was an idea that I don't think made much difference. Still, very nice clamp, and I bought it because now I got two similar ones. Not matching, but similar. Now for my current biggest clamp, and that's just because it's on a long piece of pipe. It can be as long as you want it to be. This is one that Lydia got me, and I think it is one of the neatest clamps that I own. Now why is that? Well, it's an Irwin power press and it does a couple of unique things. One, you can take it off. And if you take this pipe cap off, by just pressing that little yellow handle on the side there, I can slide it onto the pipe and instead of a clamp, it's now a spreader. You may remember this at Vantec. It has a switch on the side so that you can turn that little knob there and then it becomes a spreader. It works. But compared to this one, this one's tissue paper. This one really will put some hurt on something if you're trying to take it apart. Nice for pulling spindles out of furniture. Putting that plastic cap on there protects the threads, makes it so that if I want to put a coupling on there and add a piece of pipe, it's a lot easier. 
I just always try and protect the end of that pipe thread. Now this one, this is a cheap, well let's say inexpensive clamp. It's got a couple of things wrong with it. One, it's really lightweight. This is a half inch pipe clamp and it's one from my dad's house. When uh, he passed, I inherited all of his tools. Some of them I passed on, some of them I junked out. And I kept this one just because it was dad's. Being on a piece of galvanized pipe and, and dad had a lot of conduit. This is a electromechanical tubing. They call it rigid conduit. This half inch galvanized pipe is terrible for a beam on a pipe clamp. The clutch on the fixed end, well, less adjustable end, the clutch doesn't want to grip onto the uh, galvanized because it's slippery. The galvanized will actually tear apart and let it slide. But it works. You can't put a lot of pressure on it and like Bill said if you try and tighten it too much it just bends. This cam lock on the end is also less than perfect. Uh, it doesn't have enough grip surface, it doesn't grab well, it just relies on little teeth in the lever. And since this is an inexpensive clamp, they're not very good teeth. So if you're out buying new clamps and you see one of these, and it's the only thing you can get, yeah, go ahead and buy it. But if you got a choice, spend a couple dollars more and get a better one. Because this is just a pain in the butt to work with. Now this one, I saw this out at the estate sale barn, and they had two of them, and I thought, wow, that's kind of cool. But the other one was attached to a big steel base, and they had just a piece of pipe and uh, looked like a chunk of iron, about 50 pounds at the bottom, and it was some kind of fixturing that somebody had made. They wanted way too much for that piece of iron on the bottom. I thought, well, it's just a piece of pipe. The clamp is nice, but I'm not spending 50 bucks on it. So I got the one that was not on the big base. And it works nice. Thing I like about it is it's got some reach on it. Even these nice pony clamps have a short reach. Whereas this one will get right in there and grab a hold of something at some distance. So it's nice to have. Never really needed it, but if I do, I got it. This one came from a garage sale too and it's funny, the number of times that I see a clamp like this with a crazy price on it because they include the pipe. This piece of pipe's a couple bucks. And if you go to the junkyard, they practically give it to you. These pony clamps, I'd probably go as high as $15 to get one because they're very nice. They work really well. They don't bend. A lot of the inexpensive ones like this one, if I tighten this thing up, it's gonna bend that. That screw's gonna twist on it. This one, got a little speed handle on it. You can tighten it up. This is a cheaper knockoff. It's closer to the pony clamps. But it's still got that crappy cam. 
The reason I got it, it's a nice big clamp. Came with a bar. Five bucks. Five bucks will get you a lot. These clamps. This is the only time that I'll buy a junk clamp. And by junk, I mean it doesn't sit exactly straight. It's not a perfect clamping device. It doesn't stay lined up well. You have to kind of fiddle with it. But I use these for welding. And welding is hard on a clamp. If you use a C-clamp for welding, you're probably going to chew it up and you're going to spend more time fixing the threads on it than anything else. This one, you buy them $10 for two of them. And they hold things in place while you tack them. Gives you that third hand so that you can get things done. And you're not really worried about it if you wreck it. If you want a good welding clamp, one of these F clamps is well worth the money. A lot of reach. Better than this one by a long ways. You can get them with a longer bar. This one is an 18 inch. It's called an 18 by four and three quarter. I picked these up at Tractor Supply out of the uh, discount bin. Funny thing was, they had them on the rack and they were like $20 a piece. And I thought, wow, that's a nice clamp, but 20 bucks. And I went back a couple of weeks later and they had them in the, the discount bins at half price. And I said, well, still, it's $12. That's a lot of money. I go back another week later. They're still laying there. They're 25%. So $6? Yeah. Well worth it. Now, are these the best clamps in the world? No. They're good. They'll take a lot of abuse. You can open them up and clamp a pretty big size piece. Like I said, they've got a lot of reach on them. And because I got them at a discounted price, it was worth it for me to buy them new. Yeah, I actually do buy new clamps. Not very often. And here's this little three inch. And I've showed this in a video where I put together a couple of sawhorses and put four of these clamps on them, one on each end. I used them to build windows. The original setup for making windows was two sawhorses with three pipe clamps on it. Well, I found these at, and I forget which store it was. It was a long time ago. It wasn't Harbor Freight, but it was something similar to that. And they're not a high dollar clamp. I mean, the, th the thread's nice. It's, it's a square thread and it's got fairly good size screw on it and the little foot there works okay. It's not a great one. It's riveted on the end. But it has this interesting way of fastening it down. You can put a bolt on either side or you can put a bolt in that pocket and tighten it down. So I've made up the workbench or the sawhorses to have bolts spaced across the uh, top of the sawhorse. I just drilled holes and set washers in them to guide the bolts. Still have the, the uh, sawhorses. One of them's out there at the sawmill. Uh, they work really nice. I still have the original four. I've had them now for about going on 30 years. Can't find them anymore. If you guys see one of these, I'd be interested to know where you see them. New. Uh, used ones, obviously, there's used ones in the world. But if you find somebody that sells them new, I've had a lot of people say, where can I get them? And I really don't know. I don't know where I got these. I don't know how you get more. I've looked for them and haven't seen them. So this is a three inch made in China. 
back in the day when uh, made in China meant Taiwan because we weren't buying anything from communist China. Sad that we've changed now. And Taiwan actually made and still does make some fairly decent tools. You get what you pay for. Now this clamp is a real antique. And it's different than the bar clamps, parallel clamps that you buy now because it's got wooden screws. When you look at it, you go, okay, you just tighten this one up and then you tighten that one up and it locks in. And actually that's how it is. It does work, but this one is not really affixed. It's designed to have this one go up and pull the jaw parallel. Then these, this bottom screw, racks the jaw and pinches this front end together. It's really a nice design. The wooden screws make it a weak point, but you can put a tremendous amount of pressure on this thing because you have a good long thread. This side is just a pass-through. This side on the bottom is just a pocket. So this side over here has the threads in it. And you can buy threading dies to thread the screws and taps to make the holes and you can make as many of these things as you want you just get yourself a piece of hickory makes really good threads maple works well too and make as many clamps as you want nice design good reach plenty of power great for woodworking I wouldn't necessarily call this a welding clamp it would work but I wouldn't call it that now, some of you are probably more familiar with this kind of parallel clamp. This is a Craftsman, and it's a part number 66644. And Craftsman wood gluing clamp opens to eight and a half inches. And it has two threads, square shank or square thread with a unique situation. One end is threaded right hand and the other end is threaded left hand. That's why I can do this. And you can do the same thing with this one by setting the bottom to one width Taking it over the part and then drawing the top in and bringing these jaws in to get a pinch on whatever you're clamping. Works quite nice. First time I saw these was in Mr. Riggs shop class, seventh grade. The Roosevelt middle school over in Coldwater. He had a few of these hanging on the wall and I don't think they were craftsmen. I think they were a different model. But always was fascinated with them. This is my first parallel clamp that I ever bought. And it was in an antique shop and they wanted an arm and leg for it because it was dirty and that means it was old. 
Well, it was one of those places that I went to a few times and the price kept going down. Finally, I offered him a, I forget how much, but offered him a price that I thought it was worth and walked out with it. As an antique, I don't know, maybe somebody would think this was cool to have it in their uh, man cave. Uh, it's a nice clamp. I use it. Don't use it often, but I use it. Now we get into C-clamps, and I've got a range of them here. I've talked about C-clamps before, so we'll just go through some of the differences. This is one of my newer clamps. It's an adjustable, and it's just a nice clamp. They had it at the hardware store in town, and I picked it up. I currently have more than four. And this one, nobody wanted it because it doesn't close up. They just didn't realize what it was actually made for. This is for those situations where you really want to clamp something down solidly. If you're going to clamp something down that's, you know, an inch thick, you're going to use a smaller clamp. If you want to clamp something down that's a good size, you're going to take one of these drop forged steel manufactured in USA and no brand name. Now, I kind of surprised at that that it doesn't have a brand name, but it's a good, sturdy, solid clamp. You can tell the difference. This is a six inch clamp and this is a six inch clamp. If you look at the difference in the size of the beam, this one's a good twice as thick as this one. And the thread is a lot bigger too. And a longer handle. And this one is the Cincinnati Tool Company. I have two of these. Very happy with them. This is also a Cincinnati. Interesting that it's the same diameter thread on the clamp. A little 50-50 on that thread because it's been sitting a while. There we go. That 50-50 is good stuff. Cincinnati Tool Company. Four inch standard clamp number 540. Now we're down to the lesser clamps. This is a knockoff. I bought it at Sears. It's not a Craftsman, but it was sold at Sears. It's a casting made out of cast iron. It has a plated thread on it, which means that it doesn't rust as easily, but it's also very fine thread. You can put a lot more torque on a fine thread just because of the, the angle of the thread is, is flatter. But with this cast iron frame, you can snap the cast iron frame just by tightening the screw. Not one I would buy. So if you see these cast iron frames, and you can pretty much tell because it doesn't have any forge marks on it. It's got a casting seam, 
but it's not drop forged. This one is drop forged. This is steel. It's got a similar seam on it, but that's from where the flange is from when it gets stamped out in the, in the uh, forging die. Don't waste your money on a cast iron clamp. This is an all trade three inch. It's an inexpensive clamp along the same lines as this one, but a little higher grade. I still wouldn't put a lot of pressure on this one. Taiwan cast iron frame. This is a Craftsman, and that's a casting. You can tell that because it's got a, a cast plate right there with the name on it. Cast iron frame, inexpensive clamp. Still got the same cheap screw in it with a plating on it. And if this is all you can afford, remember that if you tighten it up, you're going to break it. Once again, inexpensive clamp. Casting, not forged. Not a brand name, but if you look at it, you can really see a lot of similarities between all of them. One of the things that happened, companies started sending their manufacturing processes overseas. <coughs> And when they did that, they also sent the expertise, the tooling, and the equipment to make it. They put the money into the setting up the shop over there so that they could make parts inexpensively. Well, when you sell things to somebody else, you lose control of them. These, so the patterns that were used to make these clamps could be used to make anybody's clamps. All they had to do is take the name off of it. So you take a Craftsman clamp, Take that little tag off of it, and it's anybody's clamp. And they start selling them for less than you can sell them here in the United States, even having them made across the ocean and having them shipped in. They're beating your price. So they put you out of business. Now this one, Somebody drilled a hole in it to use it for something else. It's a pony clamp, which means it's a good quality clamp, but when you drill a hole in it like that, you weaken it tremendously. The only advantage this one has is with that little thumb, you're not gonna put a lot of torque on it. You're not gonna break it very easily. Made in USA. Malleable iron. Then we have this one, which is my smallest clamp. It's a number 141 one inch clamp. Cheap little bugger. This one came in a box of junk, just like this one, this one, and this one came in a box of junk. When they come as a part of a lot, you don't really make a difference you know you could be fussy and say well I won't take the lot because it's got a cast iron clamp in it it's kind of silly just remember that they're lightweight and they don't have a lot of strength to them so that's the end of the clamp show there's more because there's always duplicates but saying the same thing over and over again not very interesting
I have a few clamps up here on the wall and they're duplicates of the ones that I have on the bench. It's always nice to have plenty of clamps available. If you have any suggestions for a new video, questions about today's video, or any of the other videos on the channel, just drop a note in the comments. You know I read them all. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Like Viva Free says, it feeds the algorithm. Thanks for watching. This video is not to be viewed by anyone under the age of 13 in the U.S. or 16 in the European Union without the express written permission of the parents or legal guardians of the underage person. Such written permission must be on file at the local government entity in charge of enforcing the rules and regulations established by the FTC. Anyone violating these terms is admitting by default that they hold harmless the owners and operators of this channel. Any and all questions should be addressed to your local branch of the FTC.